Hello everyone and welcome back to Flying Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. This video is going to be about Chapter 7, which is all about helicopter performance. So if you look in the handbook, they will talk about different things that affect performance in helicopter. Things like humidity, weight, and also high temperatures, winds. So we talk about performance, we talk about density altitude, and we say high, hot, and humid. Those are all bad. Those will raise your effective altitude. So, you know, what is density altitude? I like to say density altitude is essentially like wind chill for your aircraft. So it's the altitude that your aircraft feels like it's at. And that's what we call density altitude. You know, technically, if you're taking your knowledge test, you have to know that it's pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. But what does it really mean to you as a pilot? It's wind chill for the aircraft. So like every other other aircraft in the world, helicopters, we're going to have performance charts. Uh, one thing that's a little different about helicopters, we have this thing called a height velocity diagram. And I'll go through our example Schweitzer here in a bit. But that is essentially a diagram that tells you, hey, these are the places that if you're flying at this height and this speed, if you had an engine failure, you might have a really hard time doing a successful auto rotation. So we have all of these shaded regions and you're supposed to avoid flying in those shaded regions as much as possible. It's not always possible to do this, but as much as you can, you want to avoid that. And then they also will have a recommended takeoff profile. One of the things that I like is they have this little picture here. It talks about auto rotation performance. And here's what I like about this. This is actually, as it says, a chart for an S300, a Schweitzer 300 series helicopter. And it shows you the relationship of airspeed to descent rate. So here you're trying to maintain a rotor RPM of 471 and you can see that I have a minimum here. It's around, let's call it 52 miles per hour on the airspeed. And that's where I get my minimum descent rate of 1600 feet per minute. Now, if I go a little bit slower than that, I still get about the same speed. But, you know, here's the important thing, and I always like to impress this on students. If you're flying a S300 CBI, for example, the recommended and ideal airspeed for an auto rotation is 52 knots. And if you vary a little bit, it's not going to affect your descent rate strongly until you get a little further away from that minimum. So up here at 60, you're kind of trying to see a little bit of a difference. And here down at say 45-ish, you're also gonna notice a difference. Now, if you get crazy and you're going 70, now your descent rate went from 1600 to 1800. So that's gonna be a pretty big difference. And of course, if you're here, at an extremely high speed, over 80, now you're over 2,200 feet per minute on your descent. So without any further ado, let's have a look at the performance section from the Schweitzer S300 CBI manual. And they have a little index telling you what's in this chapter, and they go right into it. And they tell you things like, if you want to climb, your best rate of climb speed in the Schweitzer is 41 knots indicated airspeed. Now, you might say, hey, if I look at the height velocity diagram, it doesn't say climb out at 41 knots. And the reason for that is very simple. They're going to have you climb out normally at a higher speed because there's a better margin of safety if you were to have an engine failure on the climb out. All aircraft will have a chart like this that tell you calibrated airspeed versus what's indicated you know, there's always going to be some differences because of installation 
errors. Where's the pitot tube, etc. Here we have our height velocity diagram. And you'll notice that it has the recommended takeoff profile where you're going to go about 60 knots. So in this region, this shaded region, if you were going slow and you're at this height, you may not be able to do a successful auto rotation. Now, does that mean you're going to die? It doesn't necessarily mean that, but it means you might do some damage to the helicopter if you were to have an engine failure in that region. Often people ask about this shaded region. This is where you're going super fast just above the ground. And once again, if you had something like an engine failure happen, uh, that could be a bad thing for you, where suddenly you settle and you have a large forward speed and you know bad things can happen to your helicopter and to you if you're inside it. Then we have the in-ground effect hover ceiling versus weight. And this is for some of the older helicopters that are carbureted. And this one is for the newer helicopters, the CBI the fuel injected ones. So for example, I can look at this helicopter and say, all right, this helicopter has its maximum gross, 1750. And it's a really hot day. It's 120 degrees Fahrenheit. My hover ceiling is less than a thousand feet. If it's a hundred Fahrenheit, my hover ceiling is more than a thousand, but less than 2000. So at the Mount Pocono Airport, where I do a lot of my training, we're at about 1940, so around 2,000 feet. So you would have a bad day trying to hover at that airport if it was over 100. It's 80 and you're full gross, it's doable. So that's the in-ground effect hover ceiling versus essentially density altitude and weight. This chart just allows you to calculate density altitude, and that's pretty much it for charts in this helicopter. Not all helicopters are gonna have things like cruise performance charts and climb performance charts, and that's certainly true of the Schweitzer. So let's go ahead and fly the Schweitzer in a couple of different conditions, and we will see how this comes into play. All right, so we're gonna start at Mount Pocono and I'm going to start with a helicopter that is just within its weight limit and we'll see how it performs today. It's a little warm today but it's not terribly warm just yet. We're going to go ahead and see how much power it takes for me to hover in ground effect with the current conditions and my current weight. a lightly loaded helicopter.
let's go with something not quite so extreme. So we're going to be nine pounds over and we'll see how that affects things. I'm going to go to an airport in Idaho. This airport has an elevation of 7,920 feet. I'm going to start with the default weight and balance for this helicopter and we'll see how it performs. pounds above the gross weight. We'll see how this affects things. going to be about 200 pounds heavy and we'll see what happens here. to the default and I'm going to try to fly a quick pattern here and see how it works for me.